bus, we see all the markets and all products and all the regions actually growing. You saw with, 20, as you said, 26% on order intake, 12% in invoicing, looks quite good. And we see clearly what we budgeted for this year and forecasted fully fulfilled. So we don't change our outlook. Yeah, that's that's fascinating. So, so can you hold the margin uh, going forward? Uh, we, we've been talking a lot about inflationary pressures here, and we understand um, that not only the United States has an issue, Europe clearly is still grappling with bringing down pricing pressures. Tell us a little bit more about the impact on Billfinger. Yeah. The, at first, we have to say that the demand for efficiency and sustainability is actually rising. Yes, the inflation is there too. It's still there. It goes down in some parts, actually quite quick, but it's still there. And we are able to transfer that to our clients. That is possible for us. Thomas, really nice to see you today. Look, there was a lot in your statement, the seven page, I was reading, and I read this sentence, and I'll read it to our viewers because I think it's important. Amongst other measures, the US business is being repositioned towards more service offerings to reduce the impact of volatile project business. I thought that was very illuminating. And can you expand upon the benefits of services versus the project side of things as well? Because I know what I think you mean, but I actually want to hear it from you. It is fairly simple to say. We have still in our North American business, old construction business out of the old Bilfinger Burger time. And that is what we would like to get rid of. And we will do that this year. And that, of course, costs money. On the other side, we see a significant, significant increased demand for industrial service to help our clients in North America to get more efficient and to get more sustainable. Yeah, and that is very simple. But is it just also the fact that the margins you can make on a service side of things rather than the unpredictability of the costs on projects uh, is it, just disproportionate and that's why you're, the shift goes to services from projects? It is actually a little bit more granular. The industrial service, when you offer efficiency and sustainability, the amount of other companies who can quote on the same and having the same competence is fairly limited. When you look into that regular construction business, the amount of com competition is quite high, which means profitability and risk is higher. So from that point of view, the service and frame agreements, where we have very good profitability in Europe and the Middle East, actually, we will repeat in North America too. Thomas, um, we're, we're continually working out the best place for the big European corporates such as yourself to allocate capital. You only have a, a limited amount of capital, even at a big company like your own as well. Is Europe doing enough to attract that capital for project investment and for service investment compared with those other two regions you just meant, middle, mentioned, the Middle East, the US, and dare I say, Asia as well? Yeah, the, the big advantage of North America, for example, is the fast decision making. That is what we see in Europe, of course, and some parts of Europe actually lagging quite behind. If you have a faster decision making, then the whole environment to invest is, of course, by far more positive. Overregulation in Europe is a big blockage. Unsustainable, more critical, more permanent change in politics for the industry, like in Europe, is not helping investments. And we see a clear move out of some of the industries out of Europe into, for example, North America. Uh, and Thomas, um, let me ask you about uh, uh, the cost of living crisis, because uh, I note that um, some Billfinger employees will be uh, taking industrial action on offshore platforms as part of the uh, Unite Union's activities here in the UK. But we've seen industrial strife across continental Europe. Do you think that we are anywhere close to a, a turning point of this story or do you anticipate that we will see these industrial disputes continue? At first, the disputes is a result out of the high inflation and increased costs and not to forget uncertainty, what the people feel on each individual. Open the newspaper, listen to your own broadcasting. There's a lot of, let's say, uncertainty for the future out and people see that, people feel that and they would like to get remunerated in a proper way. On the other side, we as a company, we have then to talk with our clients. What is possible? What can we increase in prices, in costs, etc., to make that happen? So important in that situation is, A, that the companies are talking with their employees and their customers and being completely honest how the situation is, and B, that the politics are supporting in doing less uncertainty into the market, less overregulation into the market. 
Will you be increasing the salaries for those 700 workers on offshore platforms who are striking today? So I will not give a comment per single country because we are more in more than 25 countries and it's from country to country different. But we are in all countries in discussion with our employees and it's their right to put up their demand and it's our right to explain what we can do and what not. Hi, I'm Giovanna Bersecci and thank you for watching. You can check out more of our videos by clicking on the boxes on the screen. And don't forget to subscribe to our channel for more from CNBC International. Thank you for watching.